This is St. Maximilian Kolbe Catholic Church in the Archdiocese of Galveston, Houston, taking its name from a Polish Roman Catholic priest known as the Martyr of Auschwitz. The church pays homage to the unimaginable life of its patron saint through the storytelling of its striking stained glass windows. Inspired by the original chapel windows, designed by Jean Hester in 1987, Lynchburg Stained Glass collaborated with Pastor John Olm to design the windows in the new church building dedicated in the year 2010. Colby is best known for volunteering to replace his life with a prisoner condemned to death at a Nazi concentration camp in 1941, but less is known about his exceptional life urgently seeking to convert the whole world to Christianity with the help of Jesus' Immaculate Mother, Mary. Six sets of 24-foot-tall windows detail stages in St. Maximilian's life. These chapel windows represent the loving sacrifice made by our patron saint when he volunteered to replace a man condemned to die at the concentration camp Auschwitz during World War II. Diagonal lines of blue and gray stripes reminiscent of concentration camp uniforms flow through the window series. Cracked and broken color-coded triangles and stars of David represent the persecuted. These elements are carried through to the windows in our main church. St. Maximilian is memorialized by the red triangle of a political prisoner and a cross showing his assigned prison number 16670. Beveled glass strips represent rays of light from heaven, filtering through ash swirling in the skies of Auschwitz. The cross rises upward, breaking the barbed wire fence, releasing the pain and suffering of victims' broken bodies and spirits. As sunlight streams through the beveled glass, prisms of light are cast into the Immaculata Chapel, assuring us of hope and salvation. There are six sets of windows inside the church. The colors were rich and vibrant at the top, and become clear at the bottom, allowing garden views connecting heaven and earth. Each set of windows features an image of the Blessed Virgin Mary, the mother of Jesus. Mary was paramount to St. Maximilian's life. He emphasized that the Immaculate Mary's intercession to her son is the quickest and easiest way to get to heaven. Let us explore the adventure of St. Maximilian Kolbe's life. He was an always known as Maximilian. He was born with the name Raymond Colby. His parents were hard-working textile weavers, but also had side jobs. For instance, his dad ran a corner store, and he also had a big garden where he would share his fruits and vegetables with the neighbors in the town. His mom was a midwife. She helped deliver babies, but never asked for pay for that. Their home was a hub of activity among the neighbors. They would often gather there and sing Polish songs. Mr. Colby would read Polish literature, poetry, and they would keep the Polish spirit alive in their hearts. The Polish people were extremely devoted to the Blessed Mother. They thought of her as their protector. Mrs. Colby would often encourage her sons to think of their Blessed Mother as their mama, and that she loved them even more than their earthly mother could love them. The central window of the first set of windows features Mary as Our Lady of Czestochowa, Queen of Poland. In this scene, Mary holds her son Jesus. Her hands point to him, drawing attention to Jesus and away from herself. This painting has been considered miraculous by the people of Poland and has been a pilgrim site for many centuries. Legend says it was painted by St. Luke himself on a tabletop used by the Holy Family. Enemies have tried to destroy this painting and after each restoration, slash marks on Our Lady's face reappear. The two accompanying windows reflect St. Maximilian's childhood from 1894 to 1907. His given name was Raymond Kolbe, born January 8, 1894, in Zunski Voli, a region that had been Poland but was occupied at that time by Russia. He was baptized and later confirmed in the Church of the Assumption. This is the image and the church in baptismal font. The Holy Spirit, in the form of a dove, touches the font, chalice, and host, signifying Raymond's sacramental milestones. At nine years old, Raymond was a mischievous boy and his mother shouted at him in desperation, Raymond, what will become of you? Well, this upset young Raymond very much, and he ran across the street to St. Matthew's Church and cried in front of the image of Our Lady of Victory. What will become of me? he asked. Suddenly, 
Mary appeared to Raymond in a vision, offering him two crowns, a white crown for purity and a red crown for martyrdom. He chose both crowns. Noticing his drastic change in demeanor, his mother questioned Raymond later, asking, Raymond, what has changed with you? Are you ill? It is at that time when Raymond revealed to his mother about the vision that he had involving Mary and the two crowns. The central window shows Raymond as a young boy at the foot of his heavenly mother, weeping, with tears flowing down his face. The tips of the wing of the Holy Spirit continue from the first window, seeming to touch young Raymond. In the right window, Mary is symbolized by the fleur de lis. The twelve stars of Mary's crown, as referenced in Revelations 12.1, spiraled down and around the two crowns that she offered to young Raymond in the vision that he had of her as a young man. The white crown of purity, here depicted with a golden radiance, and the red crown of martyrdom, here shown interwoven with palm leaves. Since ancient times, the palm leaves signify victory, or martyrdom, in art. There has been a radical change in Raymond's life. Red triangles begin to appear in this window, foreshadowing what is to come. Along the bottoms of the windows in the main portion of the church are words of the Hail Mary prayer. The Hail Mary is based on scripture in the Gospel of Luke. The words pictured in the set of windows are, Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee, from Luke 1.28. When the angel Gabriel first greets Mary to announce that she is full of grace and asking her to be the mother of Jesus. Mr. and Mrs. Colby dreamed that their oldest son, Frannis, would serve the Lord as a priest, so he was the only child that they sent to school. Raymond and his younger brother Joseph were tasked with household chores. Mrs. Colby would send Raymond to the pharmacy to pick up medicines, and the pharmacist took notice of how bright Raymond was. He had a conversation with the Colbys and offered to tutor Raymond so that he could also attend school. Raymond and Frannis attended a parish mission, which captivated the boys. They both applied and were accepted to the Franciscan Minor Seminary. In the center window, Mary is presented as Our Lady of the Miraculous Medal. St. Catherine Labore saw Mary in a vision in 1830 and was asked by Mary to strike this medal. It became known as the Miraculous Medal. Our Lady illuminates both sides of the Miraculous Medal, and later Colby would carry pockets full of these medals to distribute, calling them Our Weapon with Which to Strike Hearts and a bullet with which a faithful soldier hits the evil enemy and rescues souls. The first window represents the beginning of Raymond Colby's formal education. At the top left is an image of the Franciscan Minor Seminary in Lvov, in former Poland, then occupied by Austria. The lamp of knowledge is shown. It illuminates an open Bible with a cross rising from it, and an open mathematics book with a symbol of physics emanating from it. Maximilian had tremendous love for Jesus present in the Eucharist. He said that, The soul becomes a living tabernacle. At that time, the soul of Jesus unites with our soul. Raymond had a deeply religious experience at Our Lady of Sorrows in Lvov, where he vowed to serve Mary in whatever service she ordained. He asked her to entrust him with a mission for which he would be willing to sacrifice his own life. The right window shows a flag with the Polish eagle and a sword behind it. These symbolize Colby's patriotism and strong desire to become a soldier for Poland. However, at the instant the Colby boys were going to tell the superior of their decision to join the military, their doorbell rang. It was their mother. She had traveled a long way to announce their younger brother would be joining them in the priesthood, that she and their father would be joining religious communities as well. He knew this to be a sign and to remain in the seminary and to become a soldier for the Immaculate Virgin Mary, whom he called the Immaculata. The hilt of the sword turns into a cross. The symbol of the conventual Franciscans is shown, a cross with Jesus' right hand and a stigmata, on St. Francis' left hand. At 16, Raymond professed his first vows as a Franciscan friar. His name changed from Raymond to Maximilian. 
he is shown grasping for the Franciscan cord with three knots that symbolize the vows of poverty, chastity, and obedience. The next verse of the Hail Mary runs across at the bottom of these windows. Blessed art thou among women. Blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Luke 1.42 A severe bone infection threatened amputation of Maximilian's thumb when he was in college. And at that time, it would have prevented him from becoming a priest. He wrapped the thumb in water from Lourdes and prayed for the Immaculata's intercession, and his thumb miraculously healed. The central window shows Our Lady of Lourdes. In 1858, 14-year-old Bernadette Subaru reported seeing a beautiful lady in a grotto near Lourdes, France. Our Lady asked Bernadette to dig, and a spring of healing water bubbled up. When Bernadette asked who the lady was, she replied, I am the Immaculate Conception. Brother Maximilian was sent to a college in Krakow, Poland, represented by St. Mary's Basilica at the top left. And then he was chosen among the top students to complete studies in Rome, represented by St. Peter's Basilica. Maximilian earned two doctorates. His first in philosophy at age 19 is symbolized by the diploma in the yin-yang. Maximilian's interest in astrophysics and spaceflight are represented by a telescope, planets, and stars. A blueprint of an airplane-type spacecraft exhibits his designs for an interplanetary flight, which were so plausible that one professor suggested that Maximilian actually patent them. He also had ideas for a perpetual motion machine and a machine to recapture sounds from the past. A cord with three knots representing the three vows of a Franciscan wind around the Franciscan cross, symbolizing Maximilian taking the final vows of a Franciscan priest in Rome at which time he added Maria to his name. In 1917, Maximilian witnessed a protest of Freemasons at St. Peter's Square with banners saying horrible things about the Catholic Church. Maximilian was surprised to hear his superiors recommending simply to pray for them. He thought, we must do something. We must take action to convert these souls. Shortly after this protest at the Vatican, Maximilian was afflicted with tuberculosis, a fatal diagnosis for most. He was sent to the hospital to recover, and during his time of recuperation, he conceived of the idea to form an army for the Immaculata to save souls. He called this army Militia Immaculata, or M.I. Maximilian and six fellow brothers founded the Militia Immaculata, or M.I., while still students in Rome on October 16, 1917, coincidentally only three days after the Miracle of the Sun in Fatima. And in 1919, the Militia Immaculata received the Pope's blessing. The MI logo is seen at the top right of the window. Figures of persons below the MI logo represent the past, present, and future members of the Militia Immaculata. Maximilian Maria Kolbe was ordained in Rome on April 28, 1918. In the center of the right window, Father Colby is shown saying his first Mass at the Church of St. Andrea della Frate in Rome, the day after his ordination. He chose this church because he had been deeply inspired by the miraculous conversion of Alphonse Radisbon and appearance of the Virgin Mary at this very altar in 1842. At the bottom of the window, images of the diploma and the labyrinth represent Maximilian's Doctorate of Theology. In the central window, Mary is shown as Our Lady of Guadalupe. In the year 1531, Juan Diego was visited numerous times by Our Lady in an area near current Mexico City. She instructed him to tell the bishop to build a chapel on that spot and to take an armful of Spanish roses to the bishop to prove her identity. Although it was wintertime, he found the roses, gathered them in his tilma, and when he presented the roses, they tumbled out, and appearing on his tilma was a miraculous image of Mary that has no scientific explanation to this day. Her features were more like those of the indigenous people of the Americas, and the symbols in the image spoke to the people of the Aztec culture. Approximately 9 million indigenous people converted to Christianity as a result of this miracle, and Juan Diego's very tilma can be viewed in Mexico City to this day 500 years later. 
After his ordination, Father Colby returned to Poland, but he continued to suffer from tuberculosis. He was sent to Zokopane in the dry air of the Tetra Mountains, depicted in the top left window. And even there, in his time of recovery, he comforted and instructed other patients. The Red Cross of Lorraine shown is a symbol of tuberculosis. Below the cross is an image of Father Colby similar to the photo taken in Zakopane. When he was well enough, he taught church history at the Franciscan Seminary in Krakow, Poland. The Immaculata's inspiration is represented by a candle and shines light upon an open scroll with the Star of David and an open book with the symbol of the Vatican, the crossed keys and tiara. These symbols together illustrate old and new sources of church teachings. Father Colby's zeal for winning souls was inspired by the Immaculata, and a monthly Night of the Immaculate magazine was born. The light continues onto a primitive printing press, and at its peak, this magazine had a press run of one million copies a month. Father Colby wished to use all forms of modern media to urgently reach as many souls as he could. Below Mary in the central window is an image of the first magazine, Ritzerch Neopoclinae, Night of the Immaculate, as it rolls off the printing press. Swords of Truth stab snakes representing heresy and masonry. A priest from the United States was one of the earliest contributors for the printing press. As publications continued to grow, Father Colby established Neopokolanov, or City of the Immaculate. Father Colby was 33 years old. The right window shows buildings under construction. The City of the Immaculate was consecrated on December 8, 1927, on the Feast of the Immaculate Conception. The first monastery chapel is shown on the left, and the first dormitory on the right. A seminary was founded, and the Franciscan Cross of San Damiano is planted in the ground. Images of farms and building implements and crops illustrate that Neopokolanov was self-reliant. It even had its own medical facilities, a fire station and fire truck, as well as a radio station. All of this was staffed by Father Colby's Neopokolanov brothers. Eventually, the monastery housed a religious community of nearly 800 men, the largest in the world at that time. Images of the daily Catholic newspaper called The Little Daily are shown. Father Colby consistently looked for modern technology to make the printing house more efficient. At one point in time, he even considered getting an airplane and an airstrip to help deliver these papers. The central window in this set of windows shows Mary as Our Lady of Lavang. In 1798, Our Lady appeared to persecute Vietnamese Christians who had fled to hide in the forest. These Christians suffered from drinking contaminated water, and Our Lady told them to boil certain leaves in order to make tea, and they recovered. In 1930, at age 36, Maximilian felt the Immaculata's call to convert souls all over the world as quickly as possible. He received approval, and his younger brother Joseph Colby, whose priestly name was Father Alphonse, took Maximilian's place as guardian of Neopokolanov. Maximilian took four brothers and departed for the Far East. In the left window at the top are Mount Hikosan at Nagasaki, Japan, and the Japanese Neopokolanov, Mugenzai no Sono, or Garden of the Immaculate, that Maximilian established. An Asian Militia Immaculata logo is shown. Father Colby and the four brothers are depicted with the new monastery in the background. Father Colby taught philosophy and began to publish in Japan. The right window depicts a radio tower transmitting his messages for Radio Neopokolanov and a call sign SP3RN. Below this are images of Russia and India visited by Father Colby. St. Basil's Cathedral in Moscow, and the Taj Mahal in India. These help to illustrate Maximilian's wide travels and influence. The cross, planted in the front of Taj Mahal, symbolizes India's willingness to create yet another city of the Immaculate. Unfortunately, Father Colby suffered greatly with his health, particularly during his time in Japan. Resources from Poland were limited, and their poverty was so severe that often the friars would only eat rice and water, and they suffered from malnutrition. At times, his brothers would hold Father Colby up during Mass, one under each arm. 
Lower on this window, St. Maximilian is depicted at his desk, his radio in front of him. Maximilian is holding one of his many publications and is touching his forehead, reminding us of his constant headaches, tuberculosis, and numerous maladies. All the while, he continued to write, correspond, teach, and carry out his missionary work until his superiors insisted that he return to Poland because of his persistent poor health. He wished to become utterly an instrument in the Immaculata's hand, and was often heard praying, I wish to consume myself in your service, leaving not a trace of my being, my ashes to be scattered to the four winds. Along the bottom of these three windows is a collection of covers of magazines Father Colby published. He published the Japanese version of The Night Seibo no Kishi. They were able to publish the first issue a month after arrival, despite having no knowledge of Japanese when they arrived. By writing in Latin, local priests and Christians helped to translate. Beneath the publication, the next verse of the Hail Mary prayer continues. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners. The final set of windows central figure shows the patron of the United States, Our Lady of the Immaculate Conception. The U.S. bishops voted unanimously for her patronage in 1846. She is shown accompanied by an angel. This set of windows depicts the final years of Maximilian's life, 1939 to 1941 ending with his imprisonment in Auschwitz and his martyrdom on August 14, 1941, at the age of 47. Although he wished to bury his bones in Japan, Father Colby's superiors wanted to keep a close eye on his failing health, so they reinstated him as guardian of the city of the Immaculate back in Poland. He felt this was the Immaculata's will and obediently accepted the decision. This was the beginning of World War II and Nazi Germany was determined to gain power throughout Europe. The Nazis steamrolled through Poland. They arrested Poles of influence, especially local leaders, clergy, and publishers, and sent them into concentration camps. In the top left window at the top, a swastika denotes Germany's occupation of Poland. Prison fence posts frame an image of Father Kolbe and several of his fellow priests and brothers deported to and then released from prison camps on Tietz and Schildberg. A Star of David in the front of the image of the chapel in the City of the Immaculate illustrates Father Kolbe's implementation of a shelter for 3,000 Polish refugees, two-thirds of whom were Jewish. In the bottom section of the window, Father Kolbe is shown, again, arrested and imprisoned, this time sent to Pawiek Prison, and then Camp Auschwitz during World War II. Entwined in the prison barbed wire is the prison number 16670 which was tattooed on Maximilian's arm. He provided comfort and spiritual enrichment to the other prisoners, sharing his food with others and hearing confessions. One prisoner at Auschwitz disappeared, and ten men from the escapee's block were then randomly selected to die in a starvation chamber as punishment for that escape. Maximilian offered to take the place of Francis Gajewniczek. Praying and seeing of the condemned could be heard in the starvation bunker. The red crown of martyrdom subtly appears in outline above Maximilian's head. In the window to the right, Maximilian is depicted in the starvation block, severely emaciated from 14 days with no water or food. Despite his severe health issues, Father Colby was the only conscious prisoner among four still alive. According to a Polish witness, Father Kolbe raised his left arm to accept the injection of carbolic acid, which finally caused his death. As he raised his arm, he reaches for the red crown of martyrdom. An angel is with Maximilian at the moment of death, as the acid flows from the needle towards Maximilian's upraised arm. A witness recalled that a smile radiated on St. Maximilian's face as he was slumped against the wall, as if he had seen the face of his Blessed Immaculate Mother. Father Colby gave his life on the 14th of August in 1941, on the vigil of the Feast of the Assumption of Mary. At the bottom of the window are palms of martyrdom, symbolizing St. Maximilian's canonization as Martyr of Charity by Pope John Paul II on October 10, 1982. These last windows depicting Father Colby's life are punctuated with the final words of the Hail Mary prayer, Now and at the hour of our death. Amen.
St. Maximilian once said, The way to Christ is through Mary, and that path is the rosary. Our east rose window has the rosary as its theme. The whole window suggests that the prayer of the rosary is a path from earth to Mary in heaven and through Mary to her son Jesus. A white rose, a symbol of Mary, is in the center of the window. The cross of Mary's son Jesus emerges from the rose. The cross radiates outward from rays of passion to the gold and glory of heaven. The faceted jewel beads of the rosary are meant to be touched. The beads flow from the top of the cross to make a garland of roses, an unbroken circle. They become the border of the window. The circle of green on the outer edge of the window symbolizes the earth on which we live and pray. The blues around the central cross and rose speak of heaven. From the green earth, symbols of hands lift up in prayer and at the same time open up to receive blessings and graces from above. The color of the triangles in the background intensifies just as the spirit grows in the person who prays. Prayer and the rosary make us receptive to heaven's many graces and blessings. In his Immaculata Prayer, St. Maximilian Kolbe says to Mary, It is through your hands that all graces come to us from the most sacred heart of Jesus. On the west wall of the church, at the center of the beautiful rose window, is the sacred heart of Jesus, radiating glorious golden light throughout the world. From the heart, encircled with thorns, the twelve promises of our Lord Jesus, as related by Margaret Mary Ellicott in 1674, go out like intense flames of love to be received by the uplifted, welcoming arms of Mary and the believer. Supporting these arms is a lily among the thorns, like that spoken of in the second chapter of the Song of Solomon and frequently used as an analogy for Mary for almost 2,000 years. Nestled within each lily is a raised jewel, a sparkling tear coming from the heart of Mary, sorrowed over the suffering and passion of her beloved Son, our Lord Jesus. A large crown of thorns encircles the whole window in its outer border, just as the rosary encircles its sister, Rose Window, our rosary window, on the opposite side of the church. Lining the sides of the Immaculata Chapel are the four sets of mysteries of the rosary. These windows, like those in the rest of the main church, were designed by Richard Buswell of Lynchburg Stained Glass. The best way to think about the rosary is that it is the way to spiritually ponder the events of our Lord Jesus, as they must have been experienced by his mother, Mary, his father, Joseph, and the apostles. The mysteries of the rosary are presented in a clockwise fashion surrounding the inside of the Immaculata Chapel. The joyful mysteries, which have green around them, green symbolizing life and growth. The glorious mysteries have deep golds of the kingdom of heaven around them. The sorrowful mysteries have scarlet colors symbolizing the passion and blood of Jesus. The luminous mysteries have clear and pale sunlight tones symbolizing light. The luminous mysteries were instituted by St. John Paul II in 2002. To learn more, or to visit St. Maximilian Colby Catholic Church in Houston, see our website at www.stmaximilian.org.